In this tutorial, we're going to look at two different ways we can populate or add data to an array. So you can see in the previous tutorial, we've created an integer array called numbers, and it can store up to 10 different values using this one identifier, numbers. So I could add data manually. So I type the name of the array numbers, and from here on in, every single time we refer to this array, we must follow it by a set of brackets. Inside those brackets is going to be an integer value. Not because it's an integer array, this integer value is referencing a different location within the array, and that location is called the index. By default, the first index of the array, like most programming languages, is index zero. And then we can go just equals, that's the regular assignment statement, and then put our integer value, followed by our semicolon. So that's added the value 42 to index 0 of the numbers array. If I wanted to add a value to the next element of the array, I just go numbers index 1 is, let's say, 67. And the next element after that, numbers 2 equals 45, for whatever my value is. And I'd keep doing this until I had added the numbers I needed, um, or until I've hit 10 different index values. That's 0 through 9. That's always one less, this is the upper bound we call it, is always one less than the size of the array, which is 10 here. But the other way we can add data to the array is a lot quicker, and that's using a random number generator. So I've got my random tool here. It's called RAND. It's from a built-in class called random. All you need to know at this stage is how do we use this to generate a random number. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a for loop that runs from the first index of the array, so i is going to be 0, until the last index of the array. So in this example, I'm going to go, so long as i is less than or equal to 9, which is the last index through our array. Remember, 0 through 9, 10 different elements. And then increment i on each iteration of the loop. Now, in one line, I'm going to add a value to the array. So numbers, but instead of hard coding the index this time, I'm going to use the loop counter. So the loop counter is now going to take on two roles. One is it's tracking the number of iterations of the for loop. And two, it's also being used to reference a particular index of the array. Now it would help if I spelt the array correctly. Here we go. Now instead of going equals and then typing an integer, I'm going to go rand.next. And I'm going to put two numbers inside the parentheses. One is the smallest value that could be generated. And I've got up here in my comment, I want to generate two digit, two digit numbers between 50 and 99. So 50 is going to be the first one. That value is also always inclusive, so 50 could be generated. But to get 99, the second value is always one more. And the semicolon goes at the end. So the second value is always exclusive. The number here is one more than the highest number that we want to generate, whereas the first number is always inclusive, meaning it could be one of the numbers that are generated. So here 50, 100 gives us that inclusive range of 50, 99. And that will, this loop I've set up to run 10 times because we've got 10 elements in the array. And on each iteration, we're going to get a different random number that's automatically generated by this random class through its next method. And it's going to do all the hard work for us. In the next tutorial, we'll look at how we can actually output the contents of the array.